Tom Miller here, owner of Leaders Building Leaders, and I'm really excited just to spend a couple minutes with you uh, today. I want to talk about how do you get promoted? How do you get promoted? Now, one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was a teacher is that, you know, I thought that being a leader and getting a promoted meant that I just, you know, like I had a badge, right? I had a badge and and, and that's all I wanted to do was just earn this uh, badge and earn this promotion. So I would just work hard and build my own ladder and, and just like take every you know, training that I could and, and, um, and just really, really, you know, fill myself up, right? With all these skills and all these letters and all these things. And so the error though that I made is that I didn't realize, I didn't realize that, you know, building your own ladder is one thing but learning how to build a ladder of other people, that's how you get promoted. You see, you can't just be good, right? A good producer. You need to be a good people developer. And to do that, right, you have to be able to lead in your relationship compass. And if you've been some of my trainings, you know, we've talked a lot about the relationship compass. The relationship compass is I've got to be able to, to lead down and understand that, you know, that I have a positional leadership over lots of, you know, lots of people, you know, because you know, of my title, but, but I don't have their permission to lead them. Okay. So I need to make sure that, you know, I'm treating them well and, you know, kind and, you know, following the golden rule. It's easy stuff, but we have a hard time doing it. Right. So the lowest level of leadership is positional leadership. But as I build trust, and as I, you know, work with individuals and as and build connections, right, and help them be more, right, I'm gaining permission. And that's, that's across the way. So I've, I'm leading down, but I'm also now I'm learning how to lead across. And so what I want to spend our time is how do you lead up, right? How do you, how do you lead up to your leader to get that uh, promotion? And so, you know, the first thing that I needed to learn, right, is that, you know, there's, there's two sides of this. So if you have a piece of paper, write this down. On the left-hand side, write the word doing. On the left-hand side, write the word doing. And on the right-hand side, write the word becoming, right? So there's two things. And, and, and so, you know, the mistake that I made early in my career, I was just a doer. I was just really good at getting things, you know, done, okay? And, and so I myself was very productive and I would be able to accomplish, you know, things. So this is part of the, the being uh, promoted, right? You got to, you got to do, do the thing, right? You have to be able to execute and you have to be able to produce. That's a, that's a big part of it. But what I didn't realize is that I, I, it's not just about doing the right thing. It's about becoming the right person. And this is where I was falling short. So you need to become, become the person, right? Who can do those same things, those same productive things, but become the person who could do them through other people. So to become that person, like you needed to be likable, right? You need to be likable. No one wants to, to hang around an unlikable person. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. And I was an unlikable person. In fact, lots of people used to tell me, you know, once you get to know Tom, then you'll start to like him, right? But I had this, you know, I had this chip on my shoulder and I wasn't always very likable. Okay. I was all uh, very likable. Well. And then, you know, the second thing you need to, to become the person is you need to become coachable. You need to become coachable. You know, being coachable means that, that you're, that you're open to new ideas. You're open to learn new strategies and you're open to the suggestions of individuals who are more successful than you most importantly. And you're not going to argue like it drives me crazy when, you know, someone calls me for advice, right? I'm a consultant. They call me for advice and then they argue with the advice that I gave them. <laughs> and I, I just said, look, you get what you fight for. If that's what you want to do it and go ahead and keep on doing it that way. I'm just letting you know how it's worked for me. So being coachable is that ability to go within so you can be, you know, better on uh, the outside. Number three is be reliable. Like I need to be able to count on you. And this is a big, this is a big part. Like, you know, when you make a commitment, you build hope. But when you keep a commitment, you build trust. And being a reliable uh, uh, leader, an internal uh, leader is huge for an organization, especially principals. Like they want individuals that they can rely on who are going to do 
you know, uh, do the work, right? They want someone who's likable because they don't want to have to handle everybody complaining about you, right? You need to be coachable, right? So you can take that um, coaching, right? And, and, and take those coaching questions and really, really be able to reflect on your practices. And then the third one is be reliable. The fourth is adaptable, okay? That's all. And this is probably where my number one strength has always been. Just in, in, in today's world, in our COVID world, in our new evolution of what schools and organizations look like, you have to be able to adapt. And, and so when I say adapt, it means be married to the mission, right? Be married to the goal, but date the plan. I need to be able to adapt the plan to be able to achieve uh, the goal. But if I'm married to the plan, if I'm not willing to adapt my communication, my uh, personality, my program, I mean, whatever I'm doing, if I can't adapt, then I'm not going to be able to succeed moving down the road. And the last one is, is, um, is honorable, okay? To be honorable. And, and there's, there's, a, there's a lot of big pieces here. And this is, these are areas that I'm constantly growing on. And, and one is to, you know, to be honorable to me means to honor, right, those ahead of you. And I think, you know, sometimes as a consultant, we come into organizations and we just kind of really dive into what's wrong. You know, I, I know that's why we were hired, but I have to remember that, you know, the organization is where it is because of they were doing their best level of thinking. And I need to honor that, right? I need to honor that, that effort and that time that they put in. And so it's, it's, it's very important, right, that you, uh, as a leader, um, one, honor yourself, right? Don't be so self-limiting. Don't talk about yourself, you know, poorly. I like to use the phrase up until now, <laughs> instead of I'm not very good at it, right? Um, so honor thyself and then honor, you know, honor thy neighbor. Uh, just to be, just, you know, treat everybody like they got a 10 on their head, right? You got it, you have to uh, declare noble intent. So. First steps to being uh, promoted, one is, 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 is to be able to do the right thing, right? To be able to do, be, a, be a, a producer, be an executor, but you also need to be, you need to start being and growing into the person that can not only be productive, but can be productive through other people and can lead individuals and, and you know, manage the work, right? But lead, but lead people by uh, becoming likable, coachable, reliable, adaptable, and, and audible. So, the next part. So, so if I'm working, that's my in, that's my internal growth, right? To, to, to be those things. And so the next step is that, is that I need to know uh, my role. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, in an organization, I remember when I was an early uh, teacher, when I was an exceptional children's teacher, you know, I want, remember I wanted that title. I wanted those uh, badges. And, and so sometimes I wasn't clear with what, what's my role in this school, right? What's, what's my role to help the organization get to where it needs to be? And so when you're not clear in your role, you're going to find a role that you think fits you, <laughs> right? Everybody knows those people. Maybe you've been one. I know I was one, right? I'm just going to do what I think needs to be done, right? So not only do you have to know your role, but you have to accept your role. And you have to be great in that role. Be so great in that role that it's impossible. It's impossible not, not to move you up, right? To give you more responsibility so I can rely on you more. But when you don't have clarity in your role, and you may have to ask your leader for this, right? What, what specifically is my role towards these goals, right? So if you think of the law of the, of the big picture, everybody has an understanding of where we're going, right? That's, that's the law of the big picture, that it's clear, and our vision is clear and our goals, right? Our goals are established and we know, you know what we're working towards. But I need to know my role to that goal because when I know my role to that goal, then I'm, you know, I'm really, really focused and I know uh, what that is, okay? So that's important. And then I need to accept that role. I may not be in the role that I desire to be in and you probably shouldn't desire it right? You want more, right? Everybody should want more for not only themselves, but for the people around them. But you need to be able to accept that role and do that role really, really well. And let me share a hint with you. Not only do you have to do that role really well, 
you have to start teaching the people around you how to do that role. Because if you become too good in that role, a leader might be hesitant to move you up. So this is where you need to mentor and equip and learn how to develop the people around you so that you're basically building a succession plan for yourself. I mean, really, in a sense, you're working your way out of a job. That's what I would like you to do, right? Start working your way out of a job. Um, and, and so you got you to gotta win in the now. You have to be so good at executing, but you have to also be so good at multiplying uh, the people around you and really, really maximize, you know, maximize the role. I mean, how much more can, can you, know, you do? And here's a, you know, here's a great example, um, you know, working with a school and a very, very talented team. And, and you know, one of the members of the team took, took the time at the end of last year. It's a transition in leadership. But they took the time to take the end of grade data and the you know, check-in data and to put it all really nice on some spreadsheets and everything. And, and it probably took this person hours you know, to do a tremendous amount of work. And so I didn't know that this was done, but I just happened to you know, come across it in the, in the Google Drive. And I, I said, hey, this is really great work. You clearly put a lot of time and effort into it. You know, are you going to um, you know, present it, right? Or like, what's next? Like you did this work, now what? And so their response was, well, I shared it with everybody. I'm like, okay, I get that. But what did you glean from it? Like, one of the things, and this is in our master, our master communication class, is that, you know, leaders, gosh, I mean, they have to make so many decisions and they get so many emails per day. Like, they need individuals to lead up. Like, hey, not only do the data, but also what are the highlights? What are the things I should be looking at? What are the, you know, what are the, you know, what are some of your recommendations? I mean, really, right, over, over, it. just I'm trying to think. My words have lost me, everybody. Just, just be extraordinary, right? Maximize that role, you know? I don't know if that even was their role to do the data, but they took the time to do it. Now I'm saying take, take the time to go the extra mile. Because let me tell you one thing, everybody. There's no traffic in the extra mile. There's a ton of traffic at the bottom of the mountain, right? There's all these people trying to push themselves out of the way, but there's hardly any traffic in that extra mile. So. Know your role, right? Get really clear on your role. What's my job? What are my main responsibilities? Accept that role, okay? Stay in that lane, right? You wanna make sure that that job is done because there's been so many times where, you know, I see, you know, people who wanting more and, and they don't even handle the stuff that I need them to do. Like handle the stuff I need you to do and then we'll start talking about these other opportunities, right? So just get so good and make sure that there's, there's, there's no issues with your current work, your, you know, current roles and responsibilities. And that's why it's so important for you to get clarity in your role. So you get clarity in your role and just kill it. Just crush that role, uh, do exactly what you have, uh, you know, maximize that time. I always believe great employees are free. So if you can find a way to, you know, get a greater return on investment, you know, what is your salary? So, so, you know, I said all that to just, you know, kind of end here. Let's just end on these couple of points here. One, you gotta be a good follower first. And so to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. And I was not a good follower in my early days as a teacher. Um, I was, um, yeah, I was just always trying to cause chaos. I was judgmental. Um, I worked hard for myself and my kids, but that's about it. And, and, and so, and it was all about me, right? My ego was my own enemy. And so um, that's why I was not a good leader in my first couple of years, because I didn't understand you know, the difference between leadership and followership. So to be a good leader, right, to be good in authority, you have to learn how to be good under authority. So that's a big piece. Be a good follower, right? Have clarity in your role, execute that role, observe your leader. What are some ways you can add value to them after you've done what you need to do and be able to do that. Um, and then as a leader, you need to be able to develop your team and really, really develop other people. And that's, and that's a skill. So if you're not very good at it, and I was not very good at it, I'm still learning how to do it, find someone who is and observe them, right? And, and, and there's some really great uh, books about it. You got the, the 17 Laws of uh, Teamwork is an excellent book by uh, John Maxwell. And we do some book studies uh, uh, you know, through it. And if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and email me at tom at lbleaders.com. And I'd be happy to talk to you and your team about you know, doing some, some workshops on teamwork and team building. Um, there's the ideal team, but there's a lot of great literature on, on uh, building teams. Um, 
uh, turn this team or, or turn, turn the ship around was another one I can't remember the author, but that was really great. So, so, but as a leader, you need to be able to develop your team. So, 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 you know, asking your team or asking the people around you, you know, hey, what are you working on? What are some things that I can do to make your job easier, right? Is it, you know, training? Is it, you know, support? Is there something in your way? Is there a barrier? Um, and just remind them, let them know, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. What, what, what can I do? I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help and train and, and equip you. So, um, and, you know, there's just many times in, in the leadership, we don't think to stop and do that for the people around us because we're so busy in the business. But let me remind you, right, leaders, whether you're at the top of the organization or somewhere in the middle of the organization, uh, your number one job, right, is to execute through people and to keep the strategy of the organization moving forward, right, you know, based upon the vision where you're going. So the more that you get stuck in the business and that's like, you know, doing the little things and the little tasks and, you know, spending time doing grants and administrative work, like the less time you're going to be able to help your team and multiply your leadership. And, and that's how you're really going to be able to be uh, promoted. Uh, make sure you're asking and being relational. And so being relational talks about, you know, asking, asking questions, so, you know, and that's not, you know, getting super personal, but it's, you know, knowing things that are happening in the lives of the people around you and just you know, being curious and, and seeing if there's a way that uh, you can help them. And, and so, you know, making sure that you're checking in with your people, at least, you know, once a week, you know, take the time, do a, do a, a walk through the school, you know, check in on, on um, you know, some folks and just, just see, right? Because you're already very productive and your classroom's probably already ready to go or your team or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, get out of your classroom, right? And, and uh, really help other people. So, so let's just, uh, you know, kind of finish up here, right? So to be promoted, we're going to continue to be good producers, right? To execute on our uh, role, but now we're also gonna make sure we're paying attention to being, being the person, right? So, you know, becoming the person, a likable, coachable, reliable, adaptable, and honorable person. We're going to learn to be a good follower. We're going to make sure that we're, you know, following good followership. We're going to be good under, under authority. Um, and we need to be able to develop our team um, as well. And which is really exciting because our team starting August 30th is going to be uh, starting a free book study. And it's on the book, Developing the Leaders Around You. And I'm really so excited to be, um, you know, using this book because as a school leader, uh, too many times we are, um, overseeing and supervising uh, enormous amounts of, of uh, staff. And, you know, uh, best practices is 12 to 15 people to you know, supervise and evaluate. But some of our leaders are out there, 33 to almost 100 people. So this is a really critical book. And I invite you to bring your team, right? Because everybody on your team needs to know how to uh, develop leaders. But also, if you're looking to be uh, promoted, uh, this is a way, right? That if you can develop the leaders around you, you're going to be a more effective leader. So you can go to our website, uh, uh, leadersbuildingleaders.com forward slash all in caps now, DT, uh, developing the leaders around, DTLAY. Sorry, I made it hard. DTLAY. Uh, or you can just email me at tom at lbleaders.com. I'm also going to put it here in the comments of how to register for this free book study. It starts August 30th. It's going to be on every Monday night for uh, five weeks. And that's going to really help you get uh, promoted so you can maximize your leadership. So be a good follower, develop the leaders around you, and make sure you're taking the time to be relational and gaining the permission of those so you can stay uh, that 360 degree leader uh, and do that. So whew, hopefully this added value to you. Uh, uh, I believe in you and I believe in your dreams. And listen, if you want more, come, come to this book study. I mean, you can certainly read the book and learn a lot, but the opportunity to read the book and discuss the book with other individuals uh, that are also looking to lead and also looking to grow their capacity will be huge. So go to leaders-building-leaders.com forward slash D-T-L-A-Y, all in caps, developing the leaders around you. And um, we'll get you set up and uh, there, there will be a workbook and a study guide and uh, five lessons 
uh, you know, for you to be able to develop your leadership of yourself and those around you. So thanks everybody. Hey, if I said something that you liked, hit the like button. If you uh, are listening on our podcast or on our YouTube page, please subscribe. Um, if I said something great, share it out. If I said something not so great, go ahead and put a comment. I need feedback in order uh, to get better. So, so wherever you're listening to it, comment, share, like, subscribe. And uh, that's for my son, Matthew, because every day he listens, he said, Dad, you didn't tell people to subscribe to your page. So, uh, you know, please do and uh, share us out. My name's Tom. I believe in you and I believe in your dream. So keep making a difference out there, everybody. It works if you work it. Take care.